What's going on? Welcome back to Copenhagen Blue. Uh, today we are going to work on the Saturn. Uh, we've got uh, a wheel bearing that's gone bad when you're going down the road and you get that whoa, 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 whoa noise. Uh, it's pretty indicative of a wheel bearing that's gone bad. So I'm going to start with the right rear. They go out on these things all the time. I've already done the left front, so I have a left rear and a right front to do as well. Um, but a little more involved because it's an all wheel drive car, but let's see how we can get it done. Let's get started. basic stuff first, get it jacked up. So we start with a 19 millimeter, get the wheel lugs off. One thing about being up in Michigan is we get the rust belt stuff. So we get the crusty cars, they don't get down south, which means everything you work on as rust everywhere you touch as rust thankfully i know there's a lot of bad saturns uh, this one's not horrible even though that bushing looks like absolute crap and i'm going to have to address that at some point usually this uh this perch is completely rotted out mine just needs a little bit of love so we're going to take off the drum so we can get to the actual wheel hub itself get that taken off all right so the first thing you want to do is you want to take off your drum should a little shimmy as long as your brakes aren't that worn should come up pretty easily these are uh, new drums that i just put on back when i did shortly after i did the shocks i think i don't know but it hasn't been that long so here's our hub assembly itself and assuming it's not seized in there it should come off to take off an axle nut more than likely you're gonna need some type of toolkit for taking off axle nuts because they're much larger than anything you're really gonna find in like your regular toolkit. And there we go, we have a 29 millimeter. So you have to get something, some places, I know you can rent these from like AutoZone. I just found that it's cheaper to do it um, myself as far as just buying a kit. If you don't have an impact, uh, it could be a little tricky to get this, but you'll probably need a breaker bar and somebody to either hold this with a breaker bar or a, like another breaker bar and then use a, a long breaker bar within a an attachment to get that apart it's not exactly fun unless you have an impact in which they're not too bad we're gonna have to get to the nuts that are down here uh, i need to figure out the size of those and then unfortunately with the shock and the way and the way things are positioned, you can't really get much of an impact. I might be able to do something with an extension and a swivel, um, but we have those four bolts and we have to hope that they break free. So let's see if we can get in there. All right, so like I said, right back here, we have four nuts. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter with an extension, which will allow us to get back in here to reach it. Don't think I'll need a swivel for this part but some of the other ones, I'm sure I will. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can get our screws out, our bolts. magnets how do those things work so what we have to do now is try and get this axle shaft to uh, tap out because it's got to have some movement otherwise it could be seized to the actual splines of the inside of the hub so we also have to look out you can see here the focus is our wheel speed sensors right down in here which comes through and connects up here so we're gently going to undo that and that should Pull right back through once we get that out we should be able to undo the wheel speed sensor part you can see there's where the four bolts go in you can see the spline that i'm trying to make sure we have loosened up we have our wheel speed sensor and that's what's going to feed through and back to the same factory style connector now this one here is actually made by uh, company bxt um, probably made in china just like everything else but it carries a five-year warranty um, 
um, which is better than pretty much most of the manufacturers out there. I've already done one on the left front and it works really, really well. Uh, I bought a cheaper Amazon one and put it on the right front. It was a two pack and it's been a year and it's already crap, which is why we're gonna be doing that one as well. But let's try and get this freed up. I think we got that. I think I saw the shaft move. PB blaster. Have to loosen things up a little bit. Holy crap, it actually seems like this one might just kind of come out. Now we'll try and get an Allen to try and get that out. It's junk, so we can let it hang around. So we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen. Allen, meet bolt, bolt, meet Allen. Holy crap, Ola. You know, I was doing struts with a guy on his car. We were like, oh, that went really well. That went really well. And it was like, as soon as we said that, the other side went to crap. Thankfully, I'm not doing the other side today, but I don't know if you can hear it. That's not a good sound. So it's pretty much crap. And when you compare it to the new one that we have, as soon as the Taylor Swift fan goes by, you really like Taylor Swift. This one, nice and smooth. That's junk. I'm gonna pull our wheel speed sensor back through the opening here. We've got a little rubber plug. Oh, actually, hmm, see, I was wrong. I didn't have to take that out. Okay, cool, I learned something today. We're gonna get this cleaned up here. Uh, this is where the hub assembly itself sits and we're going to clean up the splines, run our new wheel speed sensor through there. This is your half shaft that runs to the differential that powers the rear wheels when the rear wheels engage on this car. So let's get all this stuff cleaned up and put back together. I really wanted to clean this out with a Scotch-Brite pad, but of course the one thing I can never seem to find is a Scotch-Brite pad when I need one. But we are gonna put a little bit of anti-seize, uh, which I don't know why I tried to shake that because all it does is stay a goop and not actually go anywhere. But we're just gonna put a little anti-seize on the front of this spline. As it goes in, it should coat. We're also gonna do it all the way around where the hub itself sits so hopefully that prevents a little bit of corrosion i don't anticipate ever doing this job again on this car because pretty much by the time it needs it again it'll be in a junkyard unfortunately she has a couple years left at best so we're going to take the hub assembly we're going to feed our abs sensor through here which will then lock back into place we'll have to pull the cord itself through the grommet but as we do we can just line it up and get it where it needs to go that's it it's in it's flush we just have to put our 13 millimeter bolts back on from the back side put our washer on on the front we have our axle nut we're just gonna spin that on for the moment. So it's where it's supposed to be. And we'll put the nuts on for the hub assembly in the back. You're not supposed to use an impact to tighten down the axle nut. 
you're supposed you can use it to get it off like I did but you really shouldn't use it to torque it down because it's too much force without paying attention to your torque specs so one way we're gonna do this is we're gonna put on two of our lug bolts all the way down so you can see with the little setup that I have here we have our breaker bar and it's on that wheel bolt and it's on that one but that way we're not damaging these soft threads and I can put on our 29 millimeter and start tightening down that axle nut until we get to 160. Do it again. Cool. Now that we've put our hub assembly on, we have our new wheel speed sensor here to connect it. It's just as simple as taking the connector and it clicks right in. So now the vehicle will be able to tell the speed of this hub and know that it whether it needs to kick on the ABS or not. Put clean off. Ooh, is that pretty? Take our drum. Drum assembly back on. We have the tires. They are black walls. They blend into the pavement. But that's okay. Here's not a race car. And that's all there is to it. Pretty much with mostly simple hand tools. I mean, we had a couple of things that I used the, the impact for, obviously for getting the axle nut off, but you can do that by hand. Same thing with the bolts for the rear of the hub assembly. You could do it by hand, but impacts or uh, electric tools really help out speed things up. So hopefully this will help you in the future if it's something that you need to do. I got really lucky. My hub assembly came out and I'm in a Northern state with rust and corrosion, and usually that doesn't happen. So. We'll see if it works the same way on the other ones, but I'll let you know. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.